I'll be discussing some transistor switching circuits, mainly power transistor switches. So let me show you around my test setup. Uh, there's not a lot to see with it. This is a pair of batteries and these parts and this charger were salvaged out of an electric wheelchair. It's, this is its power system, charging system, and the whole works. Through this terminal strip I can get 12 or 24 volts at a bunch of amps. And so that's where that power comes from. Thought you might like to see that. Let's look closer at the actual test circuits. All right, here is my test setup. You saw the short clip on the battery connections off the page here. So at any rate, I'm supplied with 26.5 volts from these two terminals. This meter here, this little meter board, measures total current. These two parallel 10 ohm resistors gives me a 5 ohm load at about probably 40 watts or more. The transistors that I'll have under test, this one's an MJE 10005, and that one over there is your 2N3055. I'm going to be switching them on using this little black module there. It's a solid state relay, or you can make your own as I'll show you briefly. Here is my base current resistor. It needs to be, it's 150 ohm, 5 watt resistor. Now this is a 1 or 2 watt it gets hot which is why you're going to need a 5 watt resistor. And I'm going to be switching it off and on with an Arduino Uno. Here's a closer look at my solid state DC relay. You don't have to use this. I just happen to have four of them. Here is your inputs, 3 to 32 volts, doesn't require any resistors or whatever, connects directly to Arduino. Here is your outputs. Note the polarity. Note the polarity, and it can carry up to 4 amps at 200 volts. If you don't have one of these, you could use one of these circuits that I discussed in a previous video, the easiest one to use is an optocoupler with a TIP120. Remember in your calculations you'll have to subtract 2 volts, uh, about 2 volts that'll be dropped from the collector emitter of the TIP120. Alright, here's your example of a common emitter driver circuit. Here, this would be what a 2N3055 would be, a single bipolar transistor. This would be a Darlington setup, the MJE10005. We have a base resistor RB that limits our base current. Theoretically, the emitter base voltage of Q1 at a 2N3055 is it is 0.6 volts. It is if you use a TIP41. As we will find out with a 2N3055, no. Okay. This over here should be, I don't know, um, 1.2 volts. And it checked out pretty good on the, on, because you got double the uh, voltage base emitter because you're reading through two PN junctions, not one. Your problem with both of these particular transistors is you cannot drive them, you will not drive them with a Raspberry Pi. Its I.O. pins does not produce sufficient current. You may even have trouble in some cases with Arduino, which I think is rated for 40 milliamps. Um, when you drive a transistor into saturation, you want to apply enough current to turn this transistor fully on. And when fully on, you will get the least emitter collector voltage drop. What's ideal is a volt or less. Now, when I compared a 2N3055 to an MJE10005, 
the 10,005 was a much superior transistor to this. All right, the reason I chose uh, MJ10005 is because I happen to have some. They're still available. They're around $6 a piece at DigiKey. All right, here are my test results for the 2N3055. This SSR1 symbol is just my generic symbol for either a solid state relay, such as the commercial one, or the one I you could build with an optocoupler and a TIP120, or etc. The voltage drop across the one that I used, which is that one there, is insignificant. I didn't put it into the calculation. All right, when I turned on SSR1, I had 1.2 volts drop from emitter base on the transistor. Um, not good. So if you want to figure out your current, subtract 1.2 volts from 26.5, divide by 150, and I measured something between 160 to 170 milliamps. All right. This was not very good either. VCE, voltage collector emitter, was 3 volts. So to get the um, current through R1 and the voltage drop 2 for that matter, I have to subtract 3 volts from 26.5. As you see here, 26.5 minus 3 divided by 5 ohms is 4.7 amps. My total current, as measured by that little module there, was 4.8 amps. If I add the 170 I measured with the 4.7, you get around 4.88 amps. There you are. 4.88 amps total. That was measured. This is calculated. That's very close. This resistor R2 will get warm and so forth. So that's why you need a 5 watt resistor for this particular setup. Here is the same circuit as previously. Same circuit values and everything, but I use the MJE 10005 Power Darlington. My emitter base voltage drop was 1.68 volts. Of course, R2 again was 150 ohms 5 watt. R1 was a 5 ohm load at 40 watts. My input voltage is 26.5 volts. And here's my calculations versus, versus my measured voltage. Okay, 26.5. Uh, first good news is the emitter collector voltage drop of the transistor is 1 volt and not one volt and not three volts so 26.5 minus one divided by five is going to be around 5.1 amps all right if i'm going to take 26.5 minus 1.68 volts divide by 150 ohms i'm going to get approximately 160 milliamps that's what i actually measured well 5.1 from R1 plus 160 is going to add, is going to add up to 5.26 amps total. Remember, you got two current paths. By the way, this is conventional current, positive to negative. You're going to have um, you're going to have 5.1 amps through R1 and 160 milliamps through R2. But both of them will be sourced from the 26.5. <clears throat> when I actually measured the total current, I came up with 5.25 amps. Calculates very, very closely. So you want to use an MJE 10,005 and some kind of power switch. Of course, if you just want to test this, you could always use a push button. But I would rather have something I could run from a microcontroller. So, that completes this short video on 
these transistor switches, NPN common emitter power switches. Thanks for listening to the video. If you would, please hit the like button. I would appreciate it. And you can get the uh, schematics and other information off my website at www.bristolwatch.com. Have a great day.